G'day everyone, it's Al here from Fishing Mad and thanks for tuning in to another episode. Well today I am at Lake Wendery. So this is about an hour and 20 minute drive from Melbourne in the heart of Ballarat opposite the Botanical Gardens and this is a premier trout fishing destination with almost 500,000 trout stocked here since 1991. It's a beautiful and scenic location to bring the family and it also holds really good numbers of redfin and some good sizes as well. Now today we're going to be doing something very very different. The carp numbers have been steadily growing here in recent years. I'm going to be joining the team at the VFA and we're going to be doing some electro fishing. Yes, that's right, you heard me correctly. Some electro fishing to see the devastating impact that carp have in waterways just like this. Now, I'm going to be joined by some very clever guests. They're going to give us some insight into how this exactly works and also some suggestions on how we manage carp numbers moving forward. But before we do that, I've packed my rod and reel combo. I'm going to walk the banks here. I'm going to throw some lures and hopefully get stuck into a trout already to share with you just to show you how good this fishery is in what should be a very very, very interesting episode. So sit back and enjoy the show. Okay, so from a fishing point of view, it's a very shallow and weedy system. And I think you would have seen that by some of the drone shots where a lot of the middle of this lake is really just those grassy wetlands. It is very, very clean waters here. So all I'm gonna be doing is I've just got my standard two to four kilo spin rod. I've got a 2,500 size reel that's full with 10 pound braid. I've got one rod length of 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. And I'm just gonna start by flicking some of these slow sinking spoons. Now, the good thing about these is you're gonna get really good casting distance because they weigh about eight grams. But the fact that they're slow sinking is really gonna help to keep it away from the weed and hopefully get it into the strike zone where those trout are. I've got about an hour of fishing before the guys get here to do the electro fishing. So fingers crossed we can get stuck into a fish or two because that would be awesome. All right, let's get to it. Ah, oh, now it's pouring. Has it stopped raining all morning? Yep, got one. There we go. There is our first fish, and that is just a very little rainbow trout. So the birds are going absolutely crazy here. So this is obviously a little stocky that was recently put in there on the school holidays by the VFA. So great job, and this is the sort of things your kids would absolutely love. The thing with trout is you want to get them back into the water really quickly. There he goes. Oh, where you going, matey? <laughs> and off he swims. <laughs> Do you know how annoying you guys are while I'm trying to film? Now, I know that trout are an introduced species just like carp. There are a few key differences, though, and I think the biggest one is the fact that carp are very invasive and they breed in prolific numbers. And because of that, they have such an impact on the waterways. So, you know, they potentially threaten the other fish species in that system, plus the fauna, the oxygen levels, the water clarity, all that sort of stuff. And also trout is one of the most popular species targeted in Victorian waters. There was a survey that went around a few months ago and on the freshwater side of things, trout were the most popular fish and they're a beautiful fish. So there are some key differences, but yes, I understand. They're also an introduced fish just like carp.
Yep. Oh, no. That was a definite hit. That was a big hit. Now, one thing, guys, when you're fishing in a system like this, make sure you pick up all your rubbish. Make sure you pick up all of your line clippings. Something I'm really big on because that's the sort of stuff that gives fishing a really bad name in these areas. Uh, and your line clippings, what I do is I just keep those. I put them in my backpack or in my pocket, and then I dispose of them in a bin on my way out. So that way, I'm doing my bit. So you can go in there. This lure can go in here with the spoons. European carp were introduced to Australian waters over a hundred years ago. These invasive fish breed in prolific numbers and can have a devastating impact on other fish species, water quality, aquatic plants, oxygen levels and water clarity. Since the floods in 2002, carp have bred in record numbers in systems like the Murray River. There are many opinions on how we best manage carp numbers moving forward. It's a complex and topical landscape that often sparks heated debate. Many want to see the carp virus released and see it as the most tested solution with the biggest impact, while others are very fearful of the potential negative impact on native fish species like cod and introduced species like trout, as well as the impact on livestock and bird life. There are also concerns on how we would manage cleanups of mass killings and if carp would eventually build immunity to the virus that would require further strains to be developed. Some would like to see female carp genes altered in a daughterless system to reduce carp numbers over generations, whilst others want to see increased electrofishing in closed systems just like Lake Wendery, while others think it's too expensive and its impact too small. Some want to see carp catching community days and carp competitions with bounties, while others think these strategies have minimal overall impact and leave the onus on anglers which may be hard to regulate. As you can see, it's a complex matter with many varied opinions. Let's have a chat with Dr. Taylor Hunt and see what Victorian Fisheries makes of all this. The purpose of this project really is to uh, understand and reduce the numbers of carp in Lake Wendere. Um, we really value Wendere as a fantastic trout fishery. It's got really good redfin in it as well, um, produces year after year. But we have heard from anglers that there's been more sightings of carp lately. So this work understands how many carp are in there, but also trying to remove them if we can. Really since the 22 floods and the blackwater impacts, we've seen carp absolutely explode right across the state. Uh, in some places we're seeing 35 times record numbers of carp. Um, they're in lots of different waters. Uh, we need use a variety of techniques to manage them and not one really is a silver bullet, so to speak. In somewhere here like Lake Wendoree, we wouldn't use nets or other things. Electrofishing is our real focus to really hone in on carp and it has no impact on other bycatch species, whether it be trout, redfin, tench, or birds and other things. So it's very focused. Carp, we know, are very invasive. They've got high fecundity, they have lots of eggs and they're really tough. Um, two million eggs in an adult carp um, so some of the river systems and lakes, there are vast numbers. We need other tools to manage those, but somewhere like Lake Wendoree and Tolondo closed systems, we feel that we can make a difference and reduce the numbers so that we keep those fisheries really um, productive and valuable for trout, and redfin and so forth. So it's different tools for different waterways to manage carp. And ultimately we hope uh, if the testing of the virus is effective and it's safe, um, that that becomes a more longer term tool to manage carp across Victoria. Because if we keep them down, we know that fishing for everything else is going to be great, whether it be our native fish, Murray Cod, Golden Perch, or our other recreational species like trout and redfin, such as here at Wendoree. All right, so the boys have gotten here a little bit earlier than expected. So it means that my fishing window was very, very short today. And all we managed to catch was that little stocky rainbow trout. And unfortunately, I lost a really good fish just along the banks there. That definitely took the lure and then spat it. There was splashing water. But anyway, that's fishing. As I said, we only had a very short time on the water today. Now, the boys are here. They're prepping the boat right now. 
and safety is absolutely imperative with electrofishing. So we've just gone through a full safety debrief and during the week I even had to have an ECG of my heart. And when we get out there, we'll be wearing non-conductive rubber gloves and gum boots because we just need to take every safety precaution possible. Now, I've been instructed that all fish are going to go back except for European carp. So when we get out there, we're expecting that we're gonna catch brown trout, rainbow trout, redfin or English perch and tench because there's a good population of them in here. All of those fish species are going to go back but any carp that we catch they will not be returned to the water and they will be dispatched humanely and sent off for fertilizer or for food. So that's really important. It's funny I've been fishing at Lake Windery off and on for many years and I didn't actually know there was any carp in here because historically I've caught a lot of trout and redfin in here and a lot of this information has come from research and surveys and feedback from locals have been saying they're starting to see a lot of these fish on evenings and night times that are starting to school up in the shallows. So I'm looking forward to what we see when we get out there, whether they've exploded in big numbers or whether we just catch a few ones here and there. And we won't know that until we get on the water. So let's get on the boat. Leading the electro fishing today is Keith Bell, someone who has dedicated over 50 years of his life to harvesting, managing and researching carp. He's traveled all around the world and has shared with me some really interesting stories of carp numbers in the Gippsland region and widespread across Victoria. I started doing it when they were introduced in Australia in 1966. I was a school kid down in Gippsland and I used to go out with the other fishermen who weren't allowed to catch them in those days. I left school in 1972, went to the ocean for 12 months, got some experience out there, came back in, and then saw the opportunity. Carp, nobody wanted them. I'm gonna be doing a good thing for the environment, for the wrecks, and so I decided that I'll be a carp fisherman. And since 1984, I have just exclusively caught carp somewhere around the world. Uh, we did a job in the Mitchell River in Gippsland one night with a big uh, oversized fight net and we got 140 ton in one hour and I did another job in Moyer Lake in the Barma Forest and we got 75 tons in an hour. We do the waters off the rivers mainly so the lakes, the lagoons, the swamps and that. Tolondo Reservoir was one good example. Uh, when that was drying up, we went down there, we got 130 tonnes out of that. And that was a really good thing because we didn't get every last fish, but that meant that there was a few carp left there to spawn, which was enough to make a nice food source for the trout that they were putting in there. So today we're in an electro fisher boat. In the operation of this is that it has a generator, which uh, delivers a certain amount of voltage or power to a magical box as we call it and that converts the power into different wavelengths and different pulsations. It then goes one end of the circuit is the boat and the other end is the wands that are at the front of the boat and it completes the circuit and gives the fish muscle spasms and then the fish in theory float to the surface then we pick them up one by one the fish is not harmed in any way. Um, it might be stunned for a few minutes, but then we can put it back in the water and it swims away. We have holding tanks in the boat if there's a fish that needs a little bit of attention before we let it go again. Uh, we work on about three metres of uh, distance because if it's any more than three metres away, we can't reach it with the dip net. So yep. what's the point in upsetting a fish out there? Mm. We'll go and get him later on. Now this is my first exposure to electro fishing and I'm not 100% sure what to expect so I'll be learning plenty but it certainly doesn't take long before we're into a few fish. It's a big ready. Huge, huge ready. Lovely 
Look at that, what a beautiful big ready. So he's probably about 43 centimetres. Beautiful fish, get him on his way. See you, mate. There we go. So, so far we've seen a heap of trout which have been able to swim on their way and we've left them alone. One big ready and three tench like that. So, pretty looking fish. So, we'll get these guys back in the water. Fortunately, no carp just yet, but I'm sure we'll find a few. And that, let's get him on his way. And there you go. There's another one there. So, the good thing about this is once they've been stunned, you put them into this little live well here. They come good. And then after a couple of minutes, you release them. And they go on their merry way, just like this fella here. Your way must be right. Oh, that might be a tumour. Yeah, no, no, a tumor. that's a tumour. Yeah, it looks like I a tumour. I can see it formed on the yeah. top side here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're tumours. Look at that, eh? Interesting. What's wrong with him? Yeah. All right, on your way, mate. Um, centimetre already. These, these high 40s, these are good fish. There's something over there. That's a huge ready. Yeah, 45. 45, not bad. Right, and there you go. How's that for already? So as you know, on the show, we've traveled all around Victoria trying to find that 50 centimeter ready. And here today at Lake Windery doing some electro fishing. And that one there's about 45 centimeter. So what a beautiful fish hiding right in the weeds. And obviously you got to steer the boat in there carefully. And as you can see, there's some monster trout readies in this system. Not as many uh, carp as what we thought, but we'll keep persisting. But that is a cracker. There you go, mate. Beautiful. Oh, look, it took off that way. We got they? Good one. That's a good one too. That's all. Beautiful brown trout. Look at that. We would have seen 
that's what we're after at Lake Windery. That's the prompt target species. There we go. I'm going right. to release shot of him. Beautiful. That's yeah, Kenny Dave. Awesome. <laughs> Good job, mate. Well Thanks done. All right, so the way this whole process works is we put those electrical prongs at the front and then these fish are temporarily stunned. And what happens is they'll come to the surface and very carefully we'll net them. And then what we do is we put them in this live well here. And then after a few minutes, what happens is they come good, they're swimming around strong. And then what we'll do is we'll get them in the water and on their way, just like this now. And this is a prime target species and why so many come fishing at Lake Windery. So let's get this beautiful fish on his way. And off he swims. That's obviously for our really desired species. So in this case, the trout. When it's carp, it's a little bit different. So obviously they get stunned. We get them and we put them in here. The difference is, is what we do is we'll dispatch those fish humanely and then they go off and they either become fertiliser or food depending on what we want to do with them. But that's how we make sure that your prime target species like your trout are treated carefully and go back on their way. That's a, look at the size of that. <laughs> it's 48. Have a look at that for already. That there is 48 centimetres. So almost the 50 centimetre unicorn. Well, there you go. And it's really good to see, obviously, more of your prime target species, your trout and your redfin. And as I said in the intro, there are some thumping redfin in here. And this one here is just over 48 centimetres. So that is an absolute ripper. I'd love to have my rod and reel and throw a few lures and get stuck into these guys. So I might have to come back with my kayak, but that's an absolute thumper. So fish like this are going to go back. And obviously, it's more the invasive species like European carp. They're the ones that'll be dispatched humanely, but that is a big fish. So what, what are you doing this for? Uh, yeah, so it's a study for Victorian fisheries. Oh, okay. So a lot of the locals are saying they're starting to see growing populations of carp. So, and carp are invasive, so they're obviously just worried about what impact well, that might yeah, yeah. Where the carp are, mm. at the end of the rowing course in that dam on this side. Yeah. You go mm. up there, if I'm fishing at night, sometimes I'll take a spotlight with you and you walk along and, and the carp are like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The monsters. Which is what everyone's saying, and I think yeah, that's where is. a lot of that feedback from locals yeah, has no, come yeah, from. Um, if you walk um, around, it's mm. not so much in the lake itself, you rarely catch it in the lake, that's the odd one, but they're in those sort of, that little weedy patch on this side of the the spit that goes out. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. In that little water, in the water there. I, yeah. I couldn't believe the size of them there one night. I thought, mm. bloody hell. Yeah. They're nice trout too, aren't they? Yeah, a couple yeah. of browns, Look got one ring. Look that bloody redfin. That's a really That's nice a thumper thing. redfin, isn't it? That's a thumping ready. And this is why we're here. This is what has started this whole project. So European carp, just like this. Now what's great is that we haven't seen them in prolific numbers today, but obviously the concern is if they start growing out of control is what impact they have on the water clarity, on the oxygen levels. And of course, the more desired fish in here, which is your brown trout and your rainbow trout. So we do take this very seriously. And as I said, it's really awesome. The fact that we've only seen the one so far opposed to probably about 20 trout probably 10 massive redfin and a lot of tench so but anyway this guy here he's definitely not going back in the water and he'll end up being either fertilizer or food and it's great for our study and research information just to keep on track of these pretty invasive fish so far today we've only got one carp so far 
but we've done a lot of research. We've seen other fish here. Uh, everything is a beautiful environment here, and it's it's good to see. But you've got to keep on top of them. That one or two fish could blossom into a thousand fish, and that's what we don't want to see. Well, that sure was an interesting episode and even I learned a few things today. Now obviously we don't like getting too political on Fishing Mad, but what we're trying to do is to open up a conversation to build a framework now that serves for a better tomorrow. And I know there's a lot of really strong opinions on this and some very different opinions on which direction we go. And that's all okay, it's about working together, it's about collating those ideas so that way we've got investment and strategies moving forward to best manage this. Anyway guys, I hope that you've enjoyed the episode and I'll see you on our next show sometime soon. Take care everyone.